there are many really cool video editing programs in Linux and today I'm going to show you how to use Kden Live on Spatry's Cup of Linux. All right, let's begin. First, we're going to save our project before we put anything in there. This is something I always like to do, so we're going to go save as. We're going to navigate to the folder where I want to have this saved. Put that in videos and in the Caden folder. And I am going to call this Ubu Effects. Because that is the name of the video that I'm working on now. Alright. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add some clips to our project. You right click and select Add Clip. And then I have an end title and an entrance title in my documents here. So I'm going to go ahead and add those. Pressing the left control key and clicking the mouse, I can, click, I can select multiple items. Open those. Next, I'm going to add my footage. And we'll go ahead and navigate to my videos folder. In the effects folder, I have four videos that I've done here. We'll add those. Once this is completed, I can go ahead and save my project now. Excellent. Okay, now let's go ahead and drag our first clip onto the line here. As you can see here, it has the audio and everything. You can see this, and we can do some meddling with the audio later if necessary. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the top, though. All right. You will see here that I went ahead and removed that clip after putting it on the timeline because I want to show you a really neat feature that Caden Live has. Now, you can actually use this window here to edit your clips. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to select the clip, and the clip monitor opens up. Then, what we do is we start at the first point here. We're going to select the very beginning. Now, my screencaster likes to show a piece of the countdown, and I want to cut that out, and that is only one second. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to tell this here, if it will let me, see that right there? I want to remove that. So I'm going to go ahead and tell this one second. Maybe even move it up to move it up a little bit. Okay, perfect. That's where we want it. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and play. That's why I have my headphones on so I can hear where my speech is done and then I can put the endpoint in. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, I've paused the video. I've got my endpoint here, so I'll just go ahead and select that. And you can see this little bar here is showing the beginning to the end. Now I just click on this video here and I'll drag it to my timeline. I think that's a lot more intuitive than what OpenShot does. Okay, next I'm going to put in my intro sequence. Let me select this here. I will drag this down to the timeline. 
Okay, now in this little corner we see what we can add a transition. So if we drag down, see that little yellow marker here? That is our transition and we will use the dissolve effect. Okay, all right, and then next we can go ahead and work on our second clip. And since we're not doing any cutting on the timeline itself, we can use our clip monitor here. Now one of the things about video editing is you're going to be watching your clips over and over and over again until it gives you a headache. But that's one of the joys of being a video editor, I suppose. Okay, so now I've got my second clip loaded in here. I want to get rid of this little marker, so I'm going to go ahead and just use the arrow tool this time until I see that it is gone. Excellent, it is. So I'll mark that as my beginning point, and then I'm going to go ahead and play the video to the point where I want to cut it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now I have my end point here. Once again, we will drag this video clip onto our timeline. Now, since we're not doing much in terms of trans, I'll add a transition here at this for this video point. But now our future clips, we're not going to have any transitions. We're just going to cut to where we want to go. Now, the reason I'm cutting these clips so much is because, obviously, when I'm doing these screencasts and I'm doing a demonstration in a virtual machine, there is a longer wait time. So, for instance, in this example, I'm showing that I'm logging into Ubuntu 11.10, but rather than to, to cut the time that things are loading, I'm just cutting out all the waiting time in between so that I can shorten the length of my video, thereby being, you know, putting together a clip that's a little bit more productive for the end user rather than having them sit through a half an hour of waiting just to show one little thing. So. I find that's beneficial. Okay, and then next I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut another piece out of this video. And so over time you're going to see little clips being added. I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll return once that's done. Alright, and now I'm ready to grab my third clip and drag it onto the timeline. And as you can see here, I have three different clips out of the two MKV that I'm working on. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with three MKV and four MKV. Now one thing of interest that I really like when using the clip monitor here to do our cuts is that you have a really neat way of navigating to the points where you uh, have your in cut and your out cut. You can right click and you can select go to. You can go to the start zone which is here. You can see that it did move to the start zone or you can go to the end zone. Go to zone end. Now I've already placed my first clip from here on the line. So once I'm at that end line, I can press the in or set start zone button here and then play it to the point where I want to start the next clip.
Now I can set my next start point here. Get the picture? Makes it a lot easier for navigating. Okay, and I've gone and I have cut all of my clips, and now I'm ready to just throw in the end title. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And I want to actually lengthen this. So I'll just drag another copy of it here. And then I'll go ahead and I'll drag down to do a nice dissolve transition. Okay, and then we'll save our work. And then we can go ahead and render this thing. We'll go to project and then render. Alright, and then we have a number of choices for rendering this out. We're going to select websites and then I'm going to select YouTube 1280 by 720 to pass. And then I will select render to file. Okay, that was the Vimeo. I'm sorry, my bad. Alright, we'll do the YouTube 1280 by 722 pass. And we'll render the file. Okay, and we see we have a little progress bar going. And so I'll be able to sit down and watch this once it's done rendering. If you thought this was of any use, please hit the subscribe and like buttons. I can always use your support. And thanks for watching.